Let's talk about school. We're in a school right now, right? We're in a high school. I went to high school. In fact, I went to this high school, Lopitas High. So it's cool for me to be able to come back here and do this today. And I don't know about you, but when I was in high school, in class, learning, sometimes I wish that I could be somewhere else, somewhere more fun, fun to me. <gasps> Something like this, a theme park, one of my local theme parks, somewhere like here, another park that means a lot to me, or maybe here a place that means a lot to a lot of people. I've always loved theme parks. I've always loved being able to walk into a living, breathing story. And you hear people talk about magic when they refer to some of these parks. And it's real. I believe in it. I've seen it. And more than anywhere else, it exists backstage. It's the creative teams that work for years to build these awesome places. And it's the operations team, it's the, it's the cast members who go out and put on a smile every day to make unforgettable memories for complete strangers. They are amazing places where almost anything can happen. School is an amazing place too where pretty much anything can be learned, but only if it's taught. So when I was young, I found myself in a position of being in one place, class, while wishing so badly that I was someplace else, a theme park. Well, what if school was like a theme park? Believe it or not, they're more similar than you may think. So check this out, two kids. They're both doing the same thing, right? But they are engaged in vastly different activities. Really? Is it all that different? They're both participating in something. One of them is participating in a class discussion, while the other is participating in a story. He's not simply riding an amusement park ride. He's a character on a runaway train back in the Old West. The wildest ride in the wilderness. They both look pretty happy to be engaged in that experience, but let's put it this way. Which one do you think is going to remember their experience. The kid who answered a question in class one day, or the kid who was placed in a story and got to live out an adventure. At that moment in time, he was so immersed in the theme of that experience. And it is the theming for these attractions which make them so compelling. So let's talk about theming. Theming is an idea that can essentially be applied to pretty much anything. So let's look at it within the context of a ride. Roller coasters. We know roller coasters. They're great. So if you take a roller coaster and you add to that coaster old timey railroad and cowboys, for that, you get this. Yeehaw. Not only has the physical aesthetic from that attraction been applied to the environment of that ride, but the story, the narrative, has been woven into the experience. This attraction has a very strong story and appearance. A runaway train set in the deserts of the American West. It's classic, right? Let's compare this to something like, let's compare it to a classroom. How about that? These places are drab, dull, uninspiring. And for educators, as some of you out there are. Ideas and innovation are what you sell. That's your product. But the classroom does very little to support that. It does very little to support you. In fact, the American classroom hasn't changed much in the past 100 years, has it? It still looks the same after all these years. And now we're here. Quite a leap we've made, huh? We're giving kids laptops now. Incredible. 
For some people, this is the future of the American classroom, staring at a screen all day. You know, these kids never forget that they're in a classroom. They're confined within a learning box. Four walls and a whiteboard. We're still educating kids to go be factory workers, when what we should be doing, what we want to be doing, is preparing them to go be innovators and creators and to be empowered. Shouldn't we teach them in an environment that supports that, and in a way that supports that? We'll see in the theme park industry. We give our guests the opportunity to be completely transported to another time and a place by giving them access to totally immersive environments that place them right in the middle of a story. These are very powerful experiences. Two muggles attending the grand opening of Diagon Alley in Universal Orlando, and they are crying. They are actually crying. They're crying because they are so overwhelmed by the fact that this store that they love, that they grew up with, they're now a part of it. They're not experiencing this story from a distance. They're not spectators anymore. They are a part of it. They are in the story. They're characters in the story, and they are influencing the environment. For them, it's real. This is real life. They believe. Magic. How do we get kids to be this excited about school? We'll see in theme parks. We give guests the opportunity to uh, experience scenarios that let them be outer space explorers, uh, adventurers, princesses, superheroes, wizards. But it all starts with one thing, a story. Everything starts with a story. The story is the start of everything. Remember, everything starts with a story. It is such a important part of the themed entertainment industry because it is such a fundamental element of any successful, engaging experience. It's really hard to design a themed experience without a story because otherwise it wouldn't really have a purpose for existing, right? And perhaps most importantly, without a story, you can't cast your guest in a role. You can't make somebody the star of a passive experience. It has to be interactive and engaging. So you may be wondering, how does any of this relate to school? Well, as a student, as many of you are, you're often participating in passive experiences, yeah? Sitting in classes, listening to lectures. And though you may not like to learn this way, you're rarely in charge of how you get to learn in a classroom. But in the theme park industry, we put a lot of power into the hands of our guests. Yes, as, as designers and operators of these places, we are in complete control of the environment. You are safe, don't worry. But we give our guests the opportunity and the autonomy to choose how they experience their environment and to pick what role they choose to play in the story. So what if some of these concepts were implemented into the classroom environment? What would that look like? Believe it or not, this is something that has already been done. I did it in my class when I was an art teacher. I taught engaging lessons that were taught within the context of a story. And I wove that narrative into every element of a themed experience. There was a greater tapestry of experiences there. And it was not just an art lesson. And it was not just an art project. My role in the classroom, I didn't like to just be a teacher. I didn't like to be defined in that role. I was also a collaborator, and a storyteller, and a designer. I gave my kids the freedom to choose which path they would take within the story. And I let them decide their own direction for each project. And as they were creating work of their own design, I was there to facilitate, collaborate, share knowledge, and to ensure that they were pursuing goals which would inspire them as well as educate them. And on top of all of that, I took the story upon which the lesson was based and I recreated those environments, as best I could as a teacher, into my classroom. At that point, it had become themed education 
with the lesson, the environment, and the story flow together to create a greater immersive learning experience. And what I learned from all of this is that by creating an engaging environment that supported my lesson, it was almost like having an extra teacher in the classroom. How great is that? I was able to point to things and show kids tangibly, look at the amazing things that you could create using the skills that I'm teaching. In addition to that, I learned that teaching a lesson under the guise of a story provided the kids with a whole lot of context that they would not have had otherwise. Meaning they were able to see the practical applications of something within a scenario. Students, how many times have you been sitting in class and you lean back? And you say to yourself, I am never going to use this in real life. Right? It's frustrating. So let's think about how this could benefit older students, middle school, high school. I believe that like the guests in our theme parks, we can supply students with stories and scenarios to live out that would better prepare them for similar scenarios that they may face in the workplace you know, real life. And it's the scenarios in those projects that then become the theme for that lesson, themed education. I don't need to tell you about the sorry state of education in our country. We've all been told time and time again. I know, you know, we all know. It's, it is what it is, but nothing's really been done about it yet. Nobody has offered a viable solution on a grassroots level. We're still looking for that master solution, right? Well, maybe it's time to start looking outside of education for inspiration. And I understand the enormous pressure the teachers are under to prepare their students for those all important standardized tests. But I'm challenging educators. Take some lessons from the themed entertainment industry and find a way to apply those values to your teaching style. And I'm not saying go build roller coasters in your classroom, though that would be awesome. I'm asking you, become more than just a teacher. Become a storyteller. It doesn't matter what you teach, you can think of a theme and you can turn your classroom into an incredible engaging experience. Blackboard is blank. You just need to start with a story. And students, it's your job to finish that story. And you will be told that it can't be done. This is impossible. The budget won't allow it. We can't let our students be guinea pigs. Somebody has to take the first step. Make that you. Believe it can be better. I believe it can be better. I believe you can be better. And you may fail. But fail gloriously and learn from it. Because you can't afford to be afraid of failure. If Walt was afraid of failure, then Disneyland would never have been built and I would not be standing here on this stage. This is not an impossible goal. All it takes is change. Change from teachers and change from students. And the courage from both to do something that you know how to do in a way that you have never done it before. Thank you. <laughs>